Firelink Shrine, a light in the dark, the warmth in the cold, the hub of Dark Souls 1. I don't need to be like a video game essayist and spend five minutes explaining what you already know. The Firelink Shrine is the home to many friendly faces and routes to explore. However, what if we limited all of our equipment to everything contained in the starting area of the game? Can you beat Dark Souls 1 with only items from Firelink Shrine? So let's cover the rules. Obviously, I can only use stuff found inside the Firelink Shrine area, both from pickups and from merchants. For your knowledge, I am also including the graveyard and the area below the aqueduct. Another rule is that the merchants must be in Firelink Shrine before I can use whatever they have to force some variety. Another restriction I am setting is that I can only get one new piece of equipment after every boss. Originally, I wanted it to be random via a wheel of some sort, but this is still restrictive, but wouldn't be a potential nightmare. Lastly, I can't use any consumables found outside of Firelink, which means no upgrade to my Estus or grinding for any humanity. I'm also not going to go too hard on the soul duping this time around to keep my character to a level that is challenging. Other than that, all bosses, no summoning, let's do this. I start with the Thief class for the obligatory Master Key and make my way to the Asylum in which we use our gift to take him down. Let's just say that I have unlocked the Fire Bombs for being the hardest boss, Life. Anyways, we collect the key and Estus proper and make our way to Firelink. Did you know this tree isn't in the Arrival cutscene? Go see for yourself. For beating the Asylum Demon, I use my unlock on our first weapon of the run, the Morning Star. A spiked hammer that inflicts bleed. This won't be too bad for the early game. My initial strategy was to get as many NPCs to Firelink Shrine so that we have the most options. I wanted to get Griggs first, but ultimately decided it would be better to wait as I was getting wrecked by the local Hollows. It was only fitting that we begin this run with the Taurus Demon, and after taking out the Archers, I engage in the 1v1 and it's easy, although I was playing sloppy and not up to my standard as I get hit a few times. Spoiler alert, that's a running theme for this run. Anyways, we take him down with the Morning Star, and while it inflicts bleed, I was only able to proc it once. So let's move on to the Undead Parish. Making my way through, it was business as usual except this hollow got destroyed by the Falling Gate. Doesn't feel so good being on the round side, does it? We make our way to Andre, where I have enough resources to get the start of plus three. Also, it is important to note that after the following fight, I actually changed the rules a bit to make it more interesting. I figured that some people might complain that I shouldn't be able to upgrade weapons since I don't acquire the Titanite from Firelink, which is valid, so to compromise, I am giving myself the option to upgrade a weapon after a boss instead of taking a piece of equipment, but only 5 upgrade levels at a time. This goes for other tools as well. All you need to know is I now have another option after defeating a boss and this will be reflected after the next fight, the Gargoyles. Speaking of. Not a bad fight, but that sloppy play from earlier wasn't doing me any favors, and I almost died a couple of times throughout the fight. The Morning Star does enough damage and has good stagger damage. I ran out of Estus near the end and wow, this might be the most challenging Gargoyles fight I've had in a while, so that's nice. Either way, we ring the bell and I make my way back to Firelink to cash in my rewards. Both are found in the graveyard. The first is the Caduceus Round Shield, our only shield of the run, so it's better than nothing, totally average. Our second reward will be the Wing Spear since I never use it, and it's not like there's any other weapons in the graveyard. Moving on back to the Burg, I figured it would be a great time to head towards the Depths, so I take some of the Residents and Free Griggs. Also figured I mentioned that both a Spell Casting Tool and Spell Slash Rings are valid redeemable rewards for beating bosses, but sadly I never got around to using his or Logan's spells. Don't worry, we have other options. After being initiated into the local gang and meeting my local dealer, I decided it would be nice to fight Capra. Yeah, this one was run of the mill in the best and worst ways possible. The dogs themselves don't do much damage, but man do they build up bleed quick since they were practically naked. Hope you get used to that for half of the run. We need something, but it won't happen for a while. I switch to the Morningstar since it's upgraded and it still does good stagger damage. Let's move on to the depths. I'm not really sure why, but the Butcher Lady was aggressive immediately upon entering, which I had never seen. After exchanging some friendly love taps, I pick up the Large Ember and we free our boy Laurentius. Unlike Griggs, he will actually be useful later. After taking all the useful shortcuts and killing the Channeler this time, I figured, eh, I'm too lazy to go get upgrades, and took on the Gaping Dragon. Yep, this is a boss, but it didn't take too long. 
Heck, I even got this nice weapon we'll never use, and after a couple of minutes of mindless whacking, we get this has-been down for good. Now instead of heading towards Blight Town, I backtracked up to Andrea to get my first unlockable, a plus 5 Winged Spear, which isn't great, but I need all the damage necessary for the tank that is Quaylog. Then we make our way to our bro and get our second reward, the Pyromancy Flame. Won't be useful now, but at least we have it primed to go when we need it. And now there was a good decision I needed to make for the run. We had the option to either kill Lawtrek and obtain the FAP ring, or let him kill Anastasia and get an armor set. I ultimately opted for the ring since we'd have to use a bunch of our redeemables for it. However, please note that while I did collect the ring, I did not equip it until a later point when I had a valid reward. But this wasn't for a while. Anyways, I take the conservative method down to the bonfire, and we make our way to Quaylog. We used some of the moss to help keep our health high, and this was a good fight for me. I didn't get caught by any explosions, although I thought this one was a lava spew, so thank goodness I caught on before I got reset to the beginning of the fight. So after ringing the second bell, I thought it would be a good idea to get a free upgrade, and I was an idiot and not paying attention and got decimated by Ceaseless. Yeah, that's not ideal, but at least we can run back and... Alright, this is bad. The next attempt, however, I would avoid his attacks and get back to around his sister's grave. For anyone who doesn't know, to get Ceaseless to do his final jump attack, he has to detach his arm from his body. However, he doesn't seem to do this unless he's around the grave when the fight begins. But for some reason, he did it all the way over there. Not really sure why, but after getting prepped well done, he does the attack and... yeah. Let's move on. So we climb our way out of Blight Town and redeem our next reward. Upgrading the Pyromancy Flame to plus 5 and buying the Combustion Pyromancy. It's certainly not the best, but it'll do. I then channeled my inner patches and went to work on the Cleric Gang. The toughest one out of the bunch is Nico, the blathering idiot. It would have been easier if I'd actually attuned Combustion, but whatever. Their Force Miracle was annoying, but eventually I funneled them into this corridor where they were stuck, so I took them on one at a time. One by one by one by one, they fell, and we've got our reward, 7 Humanity. Also, the Ivory Talisman, but I dropped it promptly as we won't be needing it. If you're wondering why, well it's best to get something out of them before they're out of Fire Link for good, and we won't be needing miracles. So after that, we make our way up to Sins and get some upgrade material for later and take on the Golem. I decided to put my newly acquired Pyromancy to use and... well, it's something, I guess. Pyromancies don't use stamina in this game, which is a bonus. This fight can be summed up as, I almost got the golem to fall down several times, but failed, so we're all subject to this insanely slow and boringly drawn out fight. Well, I am. You all get the edited version. So yeah, he dies. We spend our next redeem to upgrade the wing spear to plus 10, and I wanted some more resources before taking on Anne Orlando, so I headed the Moonlight Butterfly's way. A plus 10 spear is more than enough to reasonably take it on, and a good strategy I found while he's using my spear, and after exhausting my stamina, switching to combustion while my stamina replenishes. Also I don't know why, but it never occurred to me to dodge the butterfly by standing so far away. I've been playing this game since 2013, and I've never thought to do this. It feels so wrong. Is that just me? Anyways, it takes two cycles and we pick up the Divine Ember, which will be useful for later. We head back to Firelink briefly so that we can redeem our reward by upgrading the Pyromancy Flame to plus 10. We'll need as much help as we can muster for our next area, Anne Orlando. You know the deal. Run across the rafters, deal with the archers, and I use some of my limited humanity to upgrade the bonfire here. Also, it would be good to point out that I tried to drop every humanity I had gained outside of Firelink Shrine, like from bosses and such. Anyways, we take on Thunder and Thighs, and this fight wasn't too bad. The combustion proved useful on Ornstein, except when he felt like dodging. The whole not having armor thing wasn't great, and I had to avoid being finished off with low health several times. But Phase 1 wasn't excruciating. Phase 2 is as interesting as usual, and eventually, with some patience, we take them down first try, which is always nice. We pick up the Lord Vessel, and only the Lord Vessel. We'll be back for you later. So our plan of action is to rush the entire catacombs area and get all of this done for some better equipment. I almost get wrecked by this damn skeleton and we jump to the bottom and avoiding the bone wheels, we take on Pinwheel. The first 99% of this fight was easy, but after landing the final hit, the clones didn't get the memo and almost finished me off. Doesn't matter as I torture you all by not taking the mask and heading towards the Tomb of the Giants. After grabbing the bonfire, I make my way to the giant blacksmith and pick up some materials to redeem our next upgrade. A divine weapon. Since, yeah, we're gonna need it with no armor. Well, not no armor. 
I make the jump and speak to Domo and acquire the iron golem leggings. Not sure why I opted for them since they are very heavy, but it's good for now. I then wake up the serpent and I thought it would be a good idea to side with him since I could theoretically use him to get souls, but this never came into play and after placing the lore vessel, I go back to the tomb of the giants. I just want to bring up something a couple of people were confused about. This deals with Leroy. Here I am kicking him off the edge and you can see his gear down below, and when I reload, his items are nowhere to be seen. Just thought I would make that known if anyone hadn't. And now for Nito. As you can imagine, I make short work of the skeletons with the Divine Spear. And honestly, this fight is just slow and uninteresting except for the part he inflicted Toxic on me. Which wasn't great, but it's not like he puts enough pressure on me for it to matter. Lord Soul acquired. Now we have some options here. As I speak to Patches and acquire our main weapon for the rest of the run, the Crescent Axe, which has split physical and magic damage. It's got a good length to it, and it's not as heavy as you'd think. The next thing I needed was a way to upgrade it, so I made my way to Sif and... Alright, I didn't buy the Crest of Artorias, and I can't be bothered to get the souls for it, so let's take out the Hydra while we're here. Even unupgraded, this thing does decent enough damage to the Hydra, and after doing all the dusk freeing and such, I make my way up the long ladder and say hello to the roly-poly cats. Fun fact, you can actually jump up this ledge right here and get close to the cats since they aren't aggressive yet. You can even get some pets on the cat before we take out this dog. I start out with some combustion, which can be annoying when Sif's hitboxes are being weird, but it does decent enough damage to start with. The axe itself does decent damage here, and after the usual fight you'd expect, I get this cool looking kill. And finally, we can upgrade the axe. I know that some people might question the validity of fully upgrading a twinkling titanite weapon since it is inherently stronger, but hey, this is my run, and let's be honest. Would it have mattered? Next, I wanted to do the demon's ruin stuff first, so we make our way through the lava field. Say hi to Kirk and fire Sage is manageable and the axe does a good amount of damage. My usual strategy for this boss is to gain some distance so he does this leaping smash attack. After a couple of minutes of this we end up at Centipede and after almost dying before the fight even begins, I lure him over to this corner and we put in some work. We manage to cut off his tail and after playing around for a bit, we cut his life off, and I guess I'll go over this quickly. The orange charred ring counts as a key item. As such, if you were to drop it, it would end up in Firelink Shrine in this chest. So I'm using this technicality as to why I'm using it now. The alternative would be using 30 humanity, but I didn't want to do that, so let's get on with a bit of chaos. And I actually got wrecked by the sister of Izalith. Like damn, she is an absolute tank to fire damage. It was personal, so I took her out and then took on the bed. All you need to know is 1, 2, and 3. I mean 3. And making it without any deaths is always welcome. Let's move on. Back at Firelink, I speak with Patches and acquire two pieces of armor, the Cleric armor and leggings. Not gonna lie, this looks really good. It's a shame you can't get it till midway through the game though. I use the last of the three unlocks to finally equip the FAP ring. It's better than nothing considering we won't be getting any other rings. Although now that I think about it while writing the script, I could have gotten the Bellowing Dragon Crest ring to improve my pyromancies. Moving on from forgetting about my life choices, it's time for the Duke's Archives. And while I'm here, I got the Broken Pendant and I'm not taking any chances with Curse this time, so I perform the Prison Skip and make our way out the door and all the way to see it. During this battle, I have to fight a mini-boss, and while the axe isn't the greatest here, the pyromancy puts in some work, and it's the usual cat and mouth that entails during this fight. Also, someone wanted me to put this in the video, so here you go. <clears throat> now, let's see Paul Allen's business card. Not sure where else to put that, but there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Either way, at Firelink, I use my unlock to get the cleric gauntlets and we make our way back to the asylum for the expected cleanup. This was just salt and pepper fire safe, so I hope you weren't expecting anything different at this point. The axe does great damage here, and after the fight, I get the doll, and at Firelink, I get Fireball. And you probably see where this is going. Guinevere must be having hot flashes or something, as everything gets dark, and after having a sweet embrace with the maiden, I take on Gwendolyn. Just a lot of running, as you can expect. I got a bit daring with some of the magic he does, but there isn't much else to say. And since I took on Gwendolyn, you know it's time for Painted World. I use some combustion to kill this pus looking enemy, because they don't spew their toxic mist if you kill them with fire. I also decided to fight the undead dragon to get some variety in here. 
My personal strategy is to stand in front of the head and when he breathes roll down and smack his hands. After killing, we take the other intended path of this area and it's Priscilla time. I was set on using Pyromancy to dispel their invisibility and after getting another weapon we'll never use, we take her down with some great damage from my long and heavy axe. Did you expect anything else? Arriving back at Firelink, I use my rare humanity to upgrade the bonfire to max, and that can only mean one thing. Yep, it's Four Kings time. I guess if anyone is curious about my strategy here, it's mostly the same as always. Make a rush for this ladder and hope you don't get hit off. We talked to Ingward, and I'll just bring this up now. I was supposed to come back after killing the Four Kings, and if you do that, he actually moves to Firelink. Would have been nice for the company, I suppose, but it wasn't integral as he doesn't provide much. Anyways, we drain the water and take the plunge, and yeah, this fight was pretty standard, and didn't really have my heart going like other playthroughs. The only downside here is that my flask isn't as powerful, and I don't have as much poise as I'd like, so I get staggered often. However, my DPS is quite good, and you know it's a good fight when I manage to dodge the stupid crab attack. Everything went well enough, so we can move on from this part of the script. With everything done here, it's DLC time. First up, Sanctuary Guardian. My mid roll means I get tagged by the occasional lightning, but since this is just boss number one, we have plenty of room for air here with the occasional mistake, but the weapons are doing pretty good damage. I'm surprised the axe is still doing good damage. Hopefully this keeps up, and also, we killed the Manticore with ease. So now we have the Artorias fight, and before that, I meet up with Calamite to progress this quest line early, and with that out of the way, we have Artorias. And yeah, he is bulky. So our weapons kind of dropped off at this point and for the rest of the DLC. I was playing sloppy since I had just eaten dinner, but hey, at least I'm able to stagger him out of buffing and annihilating me. Although I did let him get in one because I felt bad for him. I probably shouldn't have tanked as many of his attacks as I should have, but no issues here. First try. Anyways, you know the process by now. Roll down this elevator, run into this building, get wrecked by dark magic, and get the crest key. Afterwards, we get wrecked by non-magic damage, and we're finally at the CHASM. I upgrade my flask, and after getting hit with some more dark magic, we have Manus. The damage isn't the best, and I wasn't helping myself by mid-rolling, but I'm committed to the build, so let's go with that. I also didn't get the silver pendant, but it was odd. He didn't do any magic really until the end of the fight when he spammed the dark rain attack, and that means no shotgun attack, which is always a plus. Avoiding the greed, he goes down. Just one more left. We do the usual goff shenanigans, and we make our way to Calamite. Yeah, our weapons aren't the greatest here, but that's okay. With some patient baiting of the typical punishable moves, we make our way through the health bar in due time. Nothing else to say here. All bosses done. However, I wanted to mention something since I never really think about it. If you return to the arena where you fought the Sanctuary Guardian, there will be two weaker ones that you can fight. I tried this a couple of times for fun, but it never really went anywhere, but I thought I'd bring it up. Hopefully this distracts you from the fact that Ceaseless was the boss I died to the most in this run. So yeah, I didn't really use any of the redeemable upgrades since there really wasn't any point at this stage of the game. With everything else completed, we head to the kiln and fight Gwen. Thankfully, we have a shield, otherwise this would be a bit more painful. For some reason, I wanted to use everything I had, so I brought back the Wing Spear and Morningstar for old time's sake, and I even used both pyromancies I had acquired. It led to this weird menu swapping thing going on, but it was fine since the parries give you enough time to do so. Either way, we deal the killing blow, and yep, you can beat Dark Souls 1 with using items just from Firelink Shrine. So yeah, this was a good run. It took me about four and a half hours to run through, but I enjoyed it. I'm sure there are people screaming about this Vi-Hander, but come on, that wouldn't have been as interesting, so I didn't use it. But I figured I'd mention it anyways, so you don't think I forgot about it. Would I recommend you do something similar? Actually, yes, I would. In this game or the other one, since it seems like a unique concept, and I had a good amount of fun doing this one. Anyways. Comment how I did, and if you liked it, and subscribe if you want to see more content from me in the future. I'm Mr. Metagross, have a nice day.